Obeng, he is the executive director of the Parliamentary Network Africa. He joins us live on the phone. Good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Good afternoon. Miss mm, Obey, I know you heard the speaker there, and right now people are asking questions. Just your overall uh, comment, really, of what all that he said. So, first of all, I I believe it was uh, an interesting approach to have the speaker um, do a presser, where not only did he read a statement, but also allowed for questions from members of the press. Uh, the reason I say it's interesting, and I am in favor of that, by the way, is that most often we have these conversations going on in the, the conversations going on within the chamber of parliament, where it becomes a conversation amongst MPs, the speaker, uh, members of the press, and by extension, members of the public, do not get the opportunity to intervene and to ask questions for certain clarity and all of that. Except that, of course, all that they get to say is an issue of record, and it remains on the hands of that. So an opportunity like this to open up, uh, and Parliament does these press conferences, you know, at the beginning of every meeting of Parliament and what have you. But in this particular manner, was quite interesting. That's a very first observation. The second is that I saw the speaker, or I heard the speaker, uh, in beginning with his presser, seeking to calm the nation in his very early remarks, you know, by perhaps wanting to, before tomorrow, douse the flame a bit, ensure that the, the, the country is not as tense as it was uh, a week or two ago, uh, proud to the sitting of parliament and what have you. So I saw that also played out in the speaker's um, uh, presentation of Presa. Uh, I heard the speaker, However, also stepping into some very interesting uh, waters, you know, making some pronouncements about the judiciary and the, the executive, um, and 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 uh, passing some uh, um, personal judgment or uh, stating his impressions about what's been happening and what have you. And those were quite interesting. Of course, for every speaker and everybody who works within the parliamentary space, it is not unusual to see them also being forceful about trying to protect the parliamentary space, protect the, uh, that arm of government, and to make sure that it remains a strong arm of government that does not become subservient to the other arms of government. And so I saw him or heard him, you know, speak directly to, to that as well. And, and, and finally, with my observations on what he, he put across, I saw an opportunity for the speaker to also throw into the public domain uh, some issues that would linger on and make for some interesting debates and conversations and, 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 and talks on radio within our, our, our houses, you know, in, in trotros and what have you, including the, the, the bill that, uh, you know, was, uh, its transmission was, was terminated, so to speak, including issues around constituencies that have been denied representation and, and, and what have you. So there were many angles to this press that the speaker sought to, uh, the speaker held. And I'm sure that these angles were deliberate objectives of this press that the speaker wanted to, to achieve. Indeed. Uh, the aftermath of it, the mm. conversations that follow, will determine whether those objectives have been met or not. Last but not least, let me state that I also saw an opportunity to make a, I also saw an objective to make a, some form of a persuasive argument out of the court, you know, to, 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 to the court, because certainly the speaker knows that the, the judges uh, uh, the justice of the Supreme Court will certainly be listening and to be able to take the opportunity, in fact, the entire nation is listening, to put out some of these points that would have ordinarily been made in court forcefully so that their thoughts uh, 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 and the angles that they look at will also be informed prior to the 11th November ruling that we are also all expecting. So these are the angles that I saw. Indeed, the, in, aftermath, the, you, mm, the aftermath you just talked about, and I was going there, how do you see all that the speaker has said, uh, you know, speaking to the conscience of the judiciary and the executive? I think that uh, the, the summary of all of this and the happenings that have been taking place in the last couple of days points to the need for introspection by the leaders we've got in this country of all the three arms of government 
and to be able to put fidelity of our constitution and the national interest at the heart of whatever that they do as against partisan political interest or other forms of interest. As to whether the leaders we've got, the Speaker himself, the President, the Chief Justice, the Head of Judiciary, the members of Parliament, you know, uh, members of the uh, 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 Council of States who have waded into this conversation and other, you know, officials and what have you, as to whether we would all be reflective and play these roles that we are expected to play to ensure that we are holding fidelity to our Constitution and also seeking the national interest. Uh, 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 as this to be seen, so, for example, Mr. Speaker spoke about the fact that he thinks that the current issues within Parliament could have been settled through, like, mature deliberations and compromises in Parliament. Yeah. Ordinarily, one would have said yes, but has Parliament, the parliamentarians, the leadership on the various sides of the, of the aisle, exhibited that level of uh, uh, maturity in compromises and deliberation? that could have seen them handling and solving that particular matter at their level, you know, uh, from 2021 right up till now. Those are questions we've got to ask. And I'm sure your guess is as good as mine so far as the answers to those questions are concerned. And my, my, my final question to you for us to wrap up, uh, having made the point you made earlier, which was uh, like your first statements about the Speaker trying to calm tempers before Parliament reconvenes tomorrow, what do you expect? Unfortunately, the speaker, um, of course, the politician he is, the experienced politician he is, the experienced parliamentarian he is, ran away from some of the questions also, direct questions that were put. You know, the, you know, the last time Parliament came, the issues around who sits where and, and what have you came up, the numbers and what have you. Of course, those are still not clear. We're not too sure how these things are going to play out tomorrow. But it is my expectation that both sides of the aisle will recognize that Ghanaians are watching. Parliament has an important role to play. We need to see leaders who are putting national interest at the heart of what they do. And I pray and hope that behind the scenes, they probably would have held conversations around how to stem this or had strategies around how to stem this so that tomorrow's sitting does not end up being a replica of what happened a few Tuesdays ago when Parliament attempted to sit but was forced merely because people could not agree on where to sit. Thank you so much, Samuel Bain, for speaking to us. My pleasure always be too. Mm. And you heard that Samuel Bain, he's executive director of the Parliamentary Network Africa bringing an end to our coverage of that live press conference by the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbain.